I'm so bored right now. Oh wait, I know what to do. Netflix and chill. Oh yeah. Did you forget that you live in New York and you're under quarantine? Damn, damn, damn! Wait, I could just actually watch Netflix. Hey, what's happening guys? If you like what you see and you want to support the channel, don't forget to check out the description down below. Okay, enough of that. If you're like me and you're stuck in your self-quarantine, there are five shows I believe that could make your quarantine seem a bit less extreme. But I don't have Netflix, son. Sounds like a you problem. But seriously, if you don't have Netflix, I don't know what to tell you. Ask somebody. Ask somebody. Anyway, there are five shows I believe that will make your quarantine seem a bit less extreme. Number five, Castlevania. Now, when it comes to animation, it requires a special palette, and this is for you guys that appreciate animation. But Castlevania is actually a medieval fantasy inspired by a video game. The series follows the last member of the Walmart clan, Trevor Walmart, as he journeys across Eastern Europe, destroying monsters until we meet his ultimate monster, Dracula. Damn, that was corny. But hey, that's what it's all about, and it's fantastic. What I really like about this is that they just take the concept and run with it. And it's very hard to get a video game to be successful, but yet they find a way. They find a way. I love the animation. I love the storyline. I feel like it had solid character building moments. It had the most gruesome scenes when it comes to like, you know, animation and also even though it's animation, I'm sorry to say, it is not for kids. Do not let your kid watch this, alright? Because you're going to have to talk about the birds and the bees, and if you're not comfortable with that topic, don't let them watch it, okay? But, I do have to say, I do love Castlevania. It's a fantastic animation. What I like about it, especially, you know, the first season is really easy to get through because it's only like 25 minutes of episodes. It's a good watch for anyone that likes animation and make sure that, you know, you're watching it with people that you're okay watching sexual stuff on television because it gets raunchy. It gets raunchy. In terms of ratings, it's a 93 on Rotten Tomatoes, 97% of Google users love this, and I personally give it a 7, right? A solid 7. Why a 7? It could have done more. It's a fantastic storyline. Alright, let's move to the next one. Number 4, Altered Carbon. Based on the 2002 novel by Richard K. Morgan, the series takes place in a futuristic dystopia where human consciousness can be downloaded on these things called stacks. What are stacks, you ask? Stacks are basically memory sticks. The stacks are then placed into sleeves. Sleeves are bodies. Now, a sleeve can be altered. Altered? Hey, altered carbon! So the sleeve can be altered into Android into robots or just gene splicing or just regular human being. Don't think that it's come by and public kiss and moments because you get to live forever. Basically, everything is politics and the rich stays in power. And the more they live, they get detached from their humanity, making them turn into psychopathic raging monsters that couldn't care less about who they kill. Not only that, sleeves are expensive, so this lifestyle can only be maintained if you have the funds and the means to do so. So life was amazing for the rich, especially for Lauren Bondcraft, one of the richest men on the seven sets of the world, was murdered. But this twist, while his consciousness was being uploaded into the mainframe, he misses the crucial 48 hours of his life. What is he to do? He basically resurrects a soldier that has been frozen for 250 years, Takashi Kovach, to solve his murder. Murder. 
what I really like about this series is that everyone is hot. Everyone, okay? Like, I'm sorry. Now, the other thing is that it has a solid storyline. It has amazing special effects. The fighting scenes are believable. And the actors are also believable. In terms of ratings, 76% of Google users like this and it scored a whopping 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. As for me, I give it a an 8. An 8. Number 3, self-made. LeBron James, you did your thing, bro. You did your thing. Self-made is actually one of LeBron's very first projects from his production company, Spring Hill Entertainment. It is inspired by the life of Madam CJ Walker. But before I say why I like the show, I just want to put out there, it is wildly inaccurate. As far as a miniseries goes, it is fantastic. I love it. I know I say fantastic a lot, but it really is. I'm not going to go into all of it, but some of the things that were inaccurate was Adam Malone was not biracial. Adam Malone did not further the perception of colorism. And in fact, there are some evidence to suggest that she is the actual first female millionaire in America. Here are the reasons why I like this show. Star-studded cast. Blair Underwood. Garrett Morris, Tiffany Haddish being Tiffany Haddish, and for the Iceman on the top, Octavia Spencer. Man, this woman can act, okay? Every single time I see her in a movie, I know it's gonna be good, okay? Like, she, she don't do no wrong. I mean, is there a movie that she sucked in? Could you guys let me know? Because I haven't seen it, all right? Now, Tiffany Haddish being Tiffany Haddish as always, and you know, sometimes, that personality can get, you know, a little bit stale and dry, but in this context, it actually works, and I actually love her for doing that, alright? So, hi Tiffany Haddish! <laughs> I love the costume, I love the feel of that era. Also, like that it's not that long, too. You don't have to commit, like, your life to watching it. It's just a short mini-series, and that's for you guys that don't like to watch continuous, continuous, continuous episodes and seasons of a story. It's so short, it's just concise it's not accurate but it makes for a banging mini series in terms of ratings 65% of Google users like this damn Google users like come on I know it's not accurate but at least give it a high score it has a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes and in my book it's a 10 out of 10 Number 2. Lost in Space After a mysterious meteorite strikes the Earth, releasing particles into the air, darkening the sky, humanity realizes that this planet is not meant for long. So plans are made to colonize a predestination world. Many families go through rigorous tests to be one of the lucky families to be the first colonist. One such family that pass all these tests are the Robinsons. But in route to this new world, all of the colonists, including the Robinsons, are thrown off course and crash land on this uncharted world. Now, they are lost in space. What I like about this family is that everyone has their part and they played it so well. It was like watching a team of X-Men. You had the mother that was a scientist slash engineer. You had the father that was a soldier. You had the daughter that was a doctor. You had the young son that was a scientist. And then you had the, <laughs> I guess, normal girl. My absolute favorite character outside of the Robinsons is Dr. Smith. She is so manipulative. She will gaslight the hell out of anyone and she is so crazy. And her mission in life is to better her life so she thinks that she is the hero of her own story and everybody is the villain. This show shows you how someone with good intentions could be corrupted by the most evilest person and not even know it. In terms of ratings, 95% of Google users like this. It has a 75 on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, come on Rotten Tomatoes, are you kidding me? I personally give it a 10 out of 10. Number one, Love is Blind. The of the show is to test if love is blind, meaning 
you can fall in love with someone without actually seeing their face. But 15 men and 15 women in a house with a normal setting where the men is on one side and the females are on the other side. And they can only interact in these two-way sound room called the pots with just a thin door separating them. And you can't see the other person but you can talk to them. So you have a full-on conversation, get to know them on a deeper level more than a basically a physical level. Get to know each other in the pods. The next step is to ask whoever you got close to if they could marry you in actual real life. So then you see the actual person that you've been talking to. Now if you get through this step, then you're going to be whisked away on a vacation just to get to know each other on a physical level. And if you pass this test, you are then going to be put into an apartment and live together so you can see how you guys interact with in that individual space. And then if you pass that, you're gonna meet each other's family and friends and see how you guys' life mesh together. And if you pass that, then you go to the altar where you could say, I do or I don't. For me, the show was unexpected. I was not expecting to be this hooked on this show. I am telling you, I run out of things to watch on Netflix. I was like, okay, let me just give it a shot. What can I, what can I lose? And let me tell you, it is so great. Every episode after episode after episode after episode after episode, you're like, okay, I gotta see what's happening. I gotta see what's happening. I gotta see what's happening. It was fantastic. And yes, I said fantastic. It was fun. Fantastic! Like, actually, you know, I'm gonna turn it into a thing. It deserved five fantastic, okay? The show was awesome. Now, <laughs> yeah, I'm so new, but I would love for them to do Love is Blind with like a zero and a ten after they finish talking to each other, get to know each other in the pods, just to come out and see each other like. Like, your zero and your ten, like, ooh, because, yo, seriously, everybody on this show is at least 6.5, okay? There's no zeros, all right? So I would love to see them do this experiment again with a zero and a ten. <laughs> in terms of ratings, so 87% of Google users like this. It has a 73 on Rotten Tomatoes. Come on, Rotten Tomatoes, like, you, you suck. I personally give it a 10 out of 10, and that's the honest truth. What do you guys think about my selection? For adult animation, I got Castlevania. For adult fiction, I have Alter the Carbon. And for, well, I can't call it an uh, autobiography. I'm gonna call it like, um, a miniseries slash fiction, I have um, Self Made. And then for a family favorite, I have uh, Lost in Space. And then for reality, I have Love is Blind. So what do you guys think about my selection? Comment down below and let me know. And don't forget, practice social distancing, wash your hands, and also, above it all, enjoy your life. I'm locked up, they won't let me out, they won't let me out, I'm locked up, they won't let me out, no, they won't let me out, I'm locked up, they won't let me out.